Welcome, Bitcoin fam, to the number one daily Bitcoin pod. We recaptured 66,000. How many of you are on the pump watch? We went for 13 hours. Let me know, fam. It was pretty lit. In today's show, I'll be sharing the latest Bitcoin technical analysis, as well as BlackRock's iBit draws 260 million as Bitcoin ETFs notch the eighth day of inflows. Also, German government was rushing to sell Bitcoin to maximize their liquidity, according to the latest report by Arkham Intelligence their CEO. We're also going to be discussing the SEC likely to approve the Ethereum ETF applications from BlackRock, Van Eck, and Franklin Templeton this Monday, according to this latest report. We'll also be discussing Trump weighing Bitcoin hater Jamie Dimon for U.S. Treasury. That's right. We'll also be discussing the latest from the high priest, Max Kaiser. He wrote, conversely, Bitcoin price keeps heading to $1 million as the devil's fear-based fiat world keeps crumbling. Faith beats fear every time. Preach. I'm also going to be sharing with you a $10 million price prediction from our Kiyosaki, Rich Dad himself, as well as some very uh, bullish predictions from some other major influencers. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market. All this, plus so much more in today's show. But if you're new to the channel, very important to smash the likes, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to turn on all notifications to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every day, just like this. Today is pod episode number 1703. I'm your host, JV. It's July 17th, 2024. We had a hell of a pump over the past five, six days. We tapped a bottom of 53.5. We're currently still above 64.5. We tapped 66,000 here this morning. So let's Let's kick it off with our market watch as we do each and every day. Let me pull up Coin360 right here. You should be able to see on your screen. Uh, we have Bitcoin uh, again above 64.6 according to Coin360. Uh, XRP is currently up 6%, trading at just under 62 cents. Solana in the red, Ether in the red. A little bit of a pullback, but we've had a hell of a pump. So this is a natural correction, in my humble opinion. And check it out. CoinMarketCap.com, the crypto market cap sits at $2.35 trillion with $85 billion worth of volume in the past 24 hours. And we currently have the Bitcoin market cap at $1.27 trillion. And checking out the top 100 crypto gainers for the past 24 hours, we got Injective leading the pack up 9%, WorldCoin up 9%, and Lido Dow up 8 and a quarter percent. Which alts, if any, are you bullish on for this bull? Let me know in that live chat. And checking out the crypto bubbles to get a visual perspective. I'd say, wow, it's almost like dead even. Roughly 50% of the market in the green, 50% of the market in the red, maybe 60, 40 red over green, somewhere about there. And zooming out on the monthly, wow, finally some uh, gainers. Overall, the past 30 days has been very bearish, but we've finally flipped and safe to say half the market back in the green. And checking out the Crypto Greed and Fear Index, we're back in greed at a 69, a divine omen, fam. Uh, yesterday was 65, last week at 28 in fear, and last month at 71. In fact, we tapped extreme fear in a as soon as we had the extreme fear, we pumped because typically when we hit extreme fear, it's an indicator that we're about to pump and vice versa. If we hit extreme greed, there's a likelihood of a correction. So there you have it, family. Let me know where you feel the price action is going to take us most likely, uh, likely for the month of July. But without further ado, family, let's dive into today's Bitcoin technical analysis, aka astrology for the broskies. The headline here reads, and we'll also be pulling up the live charts here in a moment. Uh, Bitcoin price tag 66,000. Can Bitcoin bulls beat out 100 million of ass? Well, let's discuss it. Here's the one day chart. Bitcoin hit 66,000 here this morning as sustained bidding helped the bull cement. New four week highs. Look at those green candles. Pretty sexy. Now, trading view confirmed Bitcoin reaching 66.1 on Bitstamp after the latest daily close, shaking off the sell side pressure resulting from the movement of coins tied to to defunct exchange Mt. Gox, Bitcoin rebounded to deliver up to 15% gains, then measured from the start of the uptrend July 12th. That was quick, said Dan Crypto Trades, quoting him here alongside the chart. It'll be key to hold the green zone going forward, but if we do, then I am pretty confident we are back on the upwards trajectory and we will break above this range before the summer ends. And what do we got? A uh, couple more weeks left of summer, right? August 
I think summer ends. Uh, resistance on the exchange order books proved to be no hurdle for upwards trajectory. As you can see here, brought to you by Coin Glass. Reacting other traders were equally impressed. However, resistance further towards the all-time highs was of a different class alongside rising open interest. Quoting Credible Crypto, in total, around $100 million of ask above us up to 70000 here on Binance. Credible added that buyers would still have to step in to propel the market much higher. Quoting them again, ask death on the books, 2x more thick ATM, I guess at the moment, than the bid death, uh, should need significant taker bids to chew through this. And we also had SKU, who hoped to limit buyers on the dips, would characterize short-term price action going forward, again, helping to preserve the week's gains, quoting him here. So far, still seeing limit bids moving up with the price, which is what you want to see in an early uptrend. Now, meanwhile, the Bitcoin price upturn continued to be complemented by increased flows of the U.S. ETFs. Uh, for the spot Bitcoin, that is. They saw net inflows of $422 million July 16th, yesterday, according to the United Kingdom-based investment firm Farside, as you can see here. Now, the Bitcoin ETFs are in two steps forward mode after one step back in June with another $300 million plus yesterday and a billion for the week. According to Bloomberg ETF analyst Eric Valjunas, he also wrote, year-to-date net total, the most IMP number in all of this, has crossed $16 billion for the first time. Our estimate for the first 12 months was $12 to $15 billion. So already cleared that with six months left to go. So well ahead of schedule, things going accordingly with the inflows from the ETFs, which have also so been dry, driving the market up. Virtually all that Bitcoin, which was dumped by uh, the government of Germany, has been scooped up via the ETFs from the smart money, like BlackRock. Now let's check out some of the live uh, chart action. Here's the one-hour chart, and then we'll work our way back and zoom out. They say when end out, just zoom out. But uh, you should be able to see here. Um, anyways, we're currently above 64,600. This is via Coinbase, via TradingView. This is the one hour chart right now. Last three hours have been bullish. You can see the three candles at the end. Let's zoom out some. We'll check out the four hour. You can see on your screen, looking very bullish in my opinion. We did get a couple of red uh, pullbacks, you know, past maybe eight hours or so, but it's all good. After we tap the current high, just above $66,100, we're going to zoom out a little more. We'll check out the one day chart. And as you can see here, look how many green consecutive candles we had. One, two, three, four, five with an itty bitty red. So we've been bullish for the past five days, again, since the failed assassination attempt on Trump, the entire market has been pumping back in the green. And zooming out a little more, we'll check out the weekly chart. We do have a bullish flag formation, also looking extremely bullish right here. The bullish flag target we have at roughly 92,000, and then we have a target sitting all the way up at 126,267, virtually 126,300 dollars. Send it and let's get it. And let's just look at the monthly, and then we'll go back to the, the chat. And you can see on the monthly chart, we had seven green consecutive candles, followed by a red, followed by a green, followed by itty bitty red. And let's see if we can close the month of July back in the green. I think we'll be back in the green, but let me know your thoughts, family. Next story is the latest with the BlackRock uh, inflows. Larry Fink was more recently uh, interviewed on CNBC with Jim Cramer. We covered that a couple of podcast episodes ago. Well, this headline reads, BlackRock's IBID draws $260 million as Bitcoin ETFs notch the eighth day of inflows. Let's go. The BlackRock iShares Bitcoin Trust gathered $260 million from Bitcoin investors yesterday, July 16th, contributing more than half of all the net inflows into the spot. Bitcoin ETFs, on the day, it marked the eighth consecutive day of positive net inflows for the U.S. spot ETFs, reaching 422 million, and is the best performing day since June 5th, according to data from Farside. The Fidelity Wise Origin Bitcoin Fund tallied the second most inflows amongst the U.S. spot Bitcoin ETF issuers at 61 million, followed by ARC 21 shares Bitcoin ETF in third place with roughly. 30 million. Meanwhile, VanX Bitcoin ETF and Invesco Galaxy Bitcoin ETF saw inflows of 20 million, while the Grayscale, Hashtex, and Wisdom Tree issued spot Bitcoin ETFs failed to register an inflow. Meanwhile, BlackRock's Bitcoin stash is now valued back above $20 billion. 
in six months, family. Let that sink in. Following its latest purchase of 4,000 Bitcoin and Bitcoin's 3% rise since trading hours closed on Monday. We've had a hell of a pump since the weekend. Uh, the, fun, the fund first exceeded the 20 billion mark in assets under management in late May when Bitcoin fast approached 70,000, making it the world's largest Bitcoin ETF. Of course, obviously, BlackRock is also the largest asset manager in the world. Now, Nate Jarossi, president of the ETF store, praised BlackRock's newly recovered milestone while slamming that suggested only DGEN retail investors would buy the products. How do you like that, you bunch of DGENs? It comes two days after BlackRock CEO Larry Fink referred to Bitcoin as a legitimate financial instrument that can shield against currency debasement. Now go get your shine box, Larry, if you feel what I'm saying. The price fall was most fueled by concerns over the German government selling nearly 50,000 biddies and news that Mt. Cox is finally prepping to repay over $9 billion to the creditors. So there you have it. And as I shared from a, a tweet the other day from Samson Mao, the Mt. Gox Bitcoiners are OGs. They're all pre-2014 Bitcoin OGs. So we'd be shocked if 20% of them actually sold. Most of it is going to go directly into cold storage where it belongs because we're talking about OGs. So I wouldn't be so concerned over the Mt. Gox redistribution. However, if you're a Bitcoin casher, I'd be extremely concerned because that is likely going to dump and tank. So you already know. But anyways, yo, uh, next story of the day. Let's discuss the latest with the German government. A eh? headline reads, German government was rushing to sell the biddy to maximize liquidity. According to the RKM intelligence CEO. That's right. The German government was looking to sell its Bitcoin stack as soon as possible without optimizing for the smallest market impact and breast, breast, best profitability. <laughs> the German government labeled wallets Bitcoin selling patterns, including the large transfers to various uh, crypto centralized exchanges suggest that the intention was to cash in profits in the short term. According to Arcam Intelligence founder, the transfers to multiple exchanges occurred to maximize the Bitcoin liquidity. Uh, quoting him here, the last thing I would have expected is that they would just go to five different exchanges and start market selling. The fact that they are going to so many different exchanges just reads like they're just trying to get as much liquidity from each order book as possible because otherwise, why wouldn't you just use one? And that's a valid uh, concern there. Now, setting up the accounts and transferring funds to five different exchanges is more complicated than selling through a single one. True. Outflows and news surrounding German government's Bitcoin selling have put downward pressure clearly on Bitcoin, hence why we bottomed at 53.5, which was only able to recover from June's downtrend once the government ran out of Bitcoin to sell. In fact, precisely when the German government ran out of biddies, we started pumping. Bitcoin's price was in a downtrend during the month of June, and it only started recovering once the German government ran out of biddies to sell. Bitcoin's price recovered above the 60,000 psychological mark July 14th, a day after the German government labeled wallet ran out of BTC. Now that, my friend, is not a coincidence. The German government selling wasn't the only factor weighing down the Bitcoin price. Also, there's the concern over Mt. Gox, incoming creditor repayments, stagnating Bitcoin ETFs, also contributing to the price slump. But according to Arkham's morale, the volume of the Bitcoin sold by the German government had less impact on the Bitcoin price than the market's reaction to the news. Quoting him here, it could well be that there's 20 billion of Bitcoin volume a day and the German government selling 60 million a day is easily absorbed. It could also be the case that because there is news of the German government selling, there's 5 billion going out the door on the retail side because they're afraid of getting caught. However, the real opportunity to get long exposure for Bitcoin will come after the market has digested the Mt. Gox repayments, similar to the scenario following the German government Bitcoin selling, according to popular analyst Runner XBT. The analyst wrote, just like the Germany transfers, eventually they will have no price impact. That's when I hope to go long. So there you go. Uh, shout out to all my diamond hands with laser eyes. Uh, but anyways, next story of the day. Let's discuss the latest with the uh, Ethereum ETF, which is likely to get the green light Monday. Yeah, yo, uh, let's talk about it. Uh, headline reads, SEC likely to approve Ethereum ETF applications from BlackRock, Van Eck, and Franklin Templeton. 
On Monday, in fact, here's the latest report, uh, Reuters report, that is, citing three industry sources indicating the regulator has provided preliminary approval of the ETH ETF apps from asset management giant BlackRock, Van Eck, and Franklin Templeton. The sources say the firm's products will likely receive approval on Monday, then begin trading on Tuesday, less than a week away, family. Fireworks. The financial firms will need to submit follow-up documents to the SEC this week to receive final approval, according to sources. One of the sources reportedly tells Reuters that all eight Ethereum ETF applications are expected to launch next week, not just the three from BlackRock, Van Eck, and Franklin Templeton. So we're going to have a game theory again in full effect. Eric Valchuna, senior ETF analyst at Bloomberg, says that the ETFs are likely to begin trading Tuesday. Quoting him here, hearing SEC finally gotten back to the issuers today, asking them to return final S1s on Wednesday, including fees, and then request effectiveness on Monday after the close for a Tuesday 723 launch. This is provided. No unforeseeable last-minute issues of course. Now, the SEC greenlit the first spot Bitcoin ETFs back in January. I think it was the 10th, and the following day, they began trading on the 11th, bringing in billions of dollars worth of the inflows into Bitcoin by market cap. And earlier in the month, multiple firms also filed applications to launch ETFs based on Ethereum rival Solana. So there you have it, yo. I think if the Ethereum ETF goes live, which it is absolutely going to be going live very soon, potentially by this Monday or Tuesday, then next up more than likely is going to be Solana and potentially even XRP as Brad Garlinghouse has been talking about that uh, for quite some time. Here's the latest with Trump and Jamie Demon, aka Jamie Dimon, which I found very alarming. And so I want to read it. I didn't get to read the story yet. I like to do it live and in the flesh with you so you get a genuine reaction from yours truly. But here's the headline that really caught me with a tr uh, intrigue. Trump weighing Bitcoin hater Jamie Dimon for U.S. Treasury? Please say this isn't true. Please say it isn't true, but here we go. Former U.S. president and current Republican ticket nominee, Mr. Trump, said recently, if elected, he was considering J.P. Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon for his cabinet as Secretary of the Treasury. He also intends to leave Federal Reserve Chairman Jay Powell in place. My recommendation to Trump, let's get rid of Jamie Dimon. Let's not put him uh, as the Secretary of the Treasury. And let's get rid of Jay Powell as well. I think you need to actually get rid of the corruption instead of uh, give them jobs, in my humble opinion. Let me know your thoughts, family. But anyways, Trump's comments stem from an interview with Bloomberg reportedly conducted in late June, published July 16th. It's unclear if the former president's thinking remains the same in the wake of the July 13th assassination attempt. So you got to keep that in mind. This was going back from July 16th, where he was considering that was one month ago from today, ultimately. Uh, using uh, Jamie Dimon. This appears to be the first time Dimon has been publicly linked to a potential Trump administration. The two have had a somewhat uh, cantankerous relationship in the past, with Trump recently calling Dimon a highly overrated globalist. Amen. I would agree with that. Highly overrated con artist, highly overrated criminal, highly overrated huckster, highly overrated flim flam artist, as uh, Gary Gensler would say. But Anyways, uh, that was according to a post Trump did on Truth Social last year. And for his part, Diamond previously urged people to support Trump opponent Nikki Haley for the Republican nomination. During the recent Bloomberg interview, Trump said he had a lot of respect for Jamie Dimon and would consider him for the position of Secretary of the Treasury. And while this doesn't necessarily indicate any serious consideration, the fact Dimon isn't being ruled out could be cause for concern for the crypto and blockchain communities. We all know Jamie Dimon is an enemy of Bitcoin, so it honestly does not fit with you know Trump and the new running mate who are both obviously pro-Bitcoin. So keep that in mind. But nonetheless, don't get it twisted. Jamie is highly invested in Bitcoin. Uh, he's actually, his company, uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, is an authorized participant with BlackRock. So, But he still goes and does the FUD because that's his agenda at the end of the day to do the same thing Jim Cramer does, which is mislead you. That's why we don't trust Jamie Demon. Demon told Congress that the only true use case for crypto is criminals, drug traffickers, anti-money laundering, tax avoidance. In fact, we made a song about it. Bitcoin, et cetera. You pointed out the only true use case for it is criminals, drug traffickers, anti-money laundering, tax avoidance. 
tell him, Jamie? He said, he, he added, if I were the government, I'd close it down. Sure you would, Jamie. This despite the fact JP Morgan has its own blockchain token, JP Morgan coin. So obviously he's been embracing crypto for a long time. He just does the rounds. He don't want you touching it. It bears mentioning that Trump has also been negative on Bitcoin and crypto in general in the past. Well, this is true. Back in 2019, President Trump posted expressing his disdain for digital currency, quoting him here. I am not a fan of Bitcoin and other cryptos, which are not money and whose value is highly volatile and based on thin air. Apparently, this is way before Trump got orange pilled because this was roughly five years ago. Now, he went on to say that we only have one real currency in the USA. It's stronger than ever, both dependable and reliable. It is by far the most dominant currency anywhere in the world, and it will always stay that way. It is called the U.S. dollar. Trump's stance on Bitcoin appears to have softened in the time since, as he is slated to speak and headline over at the Bitcoin conference in Nashville, July 27th, only 10 more days away. Let me know, family, how many of you are going to be at that conference. I know Chandy is going to be there. I know a lot of you are going to. So, yeah, it's going to be pretty lit. Clearly, uh, Trump has been embracing Bitcoin and ironically, very ironic, 10 days after ultimately coming out and speaking very positive about Bitcoin and Bitcoin adoption in the United States and what he would do if he's elected president. He won't allow a CBDC. He will allow us to exercise our right to self-custody where Biden's trying to take all that away. 10 days later, assassination attempt on his life. 10 days after, you know what I mean? Coming out and speaking positively about Bitcoin. So things that make you go, hmm. And now in 10 days from today, he'll be speaking at Nashville. It's gonna be pretty lit. There's gonna be over 20,000 attendees. You're also gonna have RFK Jr. You're gonna have Max and Stacy there lighting it up. You're gonna have you know, Michael Saylor. You're gonna have Bill Miller. A lot of folk, a lot of influencers, Kathy Wood, JP Morgan Coin is a partner with Ripple, go figure NF. Now for our featured story of the day, I'm going to be sharing Max Kaiser's $1 million price prediction he just tweeted earlier today, along with some more recent tweets from Max. I'm also going to be sharing a $10 million price prediction from Rich Dad author Robert Kiyosaki, as well as some very bullish predictions from other major influencers. So let's start right here with this tweet from Max. Conversely, Bitcoin price keeps heading to $1 million million dollars as the devil's fear-based fiat world keeps crumbling. Faith beats fear every time. Read my piece in the Bitcoin magazine entitled Buy Love, Sell Fear. That's a classic piece he released back in October of 2023. If you haven't checked out that uh, article. Make sure to check it out and shout out to the high priest, Max Kaiser. He also recently wrote, uh, this was on the 15th, two days ago. My understanding is that Trump, when he wins, is announcing a plan to do a sailor for the U.S. Treasury at the Bitcoin conference. Could you imagine uh, Bitcoin being adopted as a strategic reserve asset for the United States of America, for the U.S. Treasury? Well, that's what he's talking about right here. This would be extremely bullish, not just for Bitcoin, but clearly for the United States of America. Also, in a recent interview, he shared, once you get into Bitcoin pretty quickly, you start to realize it is unconfiscatable. It's inflation proof. It is mine. No one else can take it from me. And the purchasing power is going up for ever. And he continues, Michael Saylor works for me. Larry Fink works for me. Those are my employees. When you turn on CNBC and Larry Fink's there talking about how great Bitcoin is, two years ago, he thought it was shit. Now he's like, oh, I believe in it. And you're like, thank you, Larry. I'm up another 10%. Thanks to you, Larry. You're doing a good job, Larry. Now go get your shine box, Larry. Epic. <laughs> I love this quote. It is amazing. I love Max when he uh, rants like that. Clearly, that's the uh, reference from Goodfellas. Now go get your shine box. Classic. I love Savage Max Kaiser. And uh, he actually says that in this interview. That's verbatim, word for word. I transcribed it. So also make sure, guys, you're following the Huddle House. Huddle House Studio over on X. It's a new account. It's all purely Max and Stacy and Bukele. I'm actually a content creator on the account 
called the Delicate, so I actually can post directly from there. I actually posted this video and uh, transcribed it, reposted it, and all that fun stuff. But show Max and Stacy your support family. Now, in other tweets, they also shared, and this was actually uh, last year in 2023, if only 5% of that money ends up in Bitcoin, referring to the total addressable market, you're talking about a price of $600,000, $700,000, $800,000 per Bitcoin, which of course is a target now within reach. If Larry Fink over at BlackRock, the $9 trillion gun is going to start filing firing bullets at this little Bitcoin target. And lo and behold, that's precisely what Larry Fink ended up doing. So Max nailed it. Once again, this dude's prophetic, uh, for real. So last year he called it. And back then, uh, they were only worth nine trillion. Now they're worth, I believe it's 10.6 billion or 10.8 billion because they're up uh, uh, I'm sorry, trillion, because they're up almost a trillion dollars on their Bitcoin uh, investment, which is mind boggling, right? So now for this other uh, prediction, uh, Robert Kiyosaki predicts 10 million Bitcoin. We're going to be sharing that, but let's start with his tweet. This was about a week ago, I'm going to guess. Let's look at the timestamp. July 3rd, so two weeks ago. Here's what he wrote. Boom, go in bust. Technical charts indicate the biggest crash in history coming. Prices of real estate, stocks, bonds, gold, silver, and Bitcoin crash. Great news. Good time to buy bargains. will follow. Technical charts indicate major long-term bull market cycle. will follow. Starting a bull market climb in late 2025. Raising prices for years. This bull market cycle is the boom goal. Silver and Bitcoin investors have been waiting for. Their patience will be rewarded. This is the long-term bull market cycle they knew had to come. They know it has to come because the U.S. is the biggest debtor nation in history. They know this long cycle bull market is coming because they know faith and confidence in fake money is dissolving. They know history will repeat. They know what happened to Germany's Reichsmark and the Zimbabwe dollar. They know more and more people are finally waking up. They know after the crash, the long cycle bull market for gold, silver, and Bitcoin will begin. They know after the crash, gold, silver, and Bitcoin will once again begin climbing to hit all-time highs. Gold, possibly $15,000 an ounce. Silver, possibly $110 an ounce. Bitcoin, easily to $10 million per coin. They know to be patient. They know their time has arrived. Take care. Now, I want to point something out here, which I find interesting. He says gold, possibly. Possibly means he's not that sure. He's just hopeful. He also says it for silver, possibly, $110 an ounce. Notice for Bitcoin, he doesn't use the term possibly. Notice he uses the term easily, which means he has confidence that Bitcoin is going to hit $10 million per coin, but he's not that confident in gold even hitting 15000 or silver hitting $110 an ounce. So read between the lines. That's very powerful. If you know what I'm saying, Bitcoin will easily hit $10 million. Gold might possibly hit 15000 right? Let me know if you understand what I'm saying there. So yeah, we know Kiyosaki has been very bullish on Bitcoin for a very long time. Now let's talk about some of these other uh, bullish predictions from other big uh, influencers. Uh, let's discuss Kathy Wood. She's going to be speaking at the Bitcoin conference uh, as well here coming up. Uh, next week. Uh, Jack Dorsey also, obviously the uh, founder of Twitter. Uh, they both believe Bitcoin will go to a million. And in fact, we had actually covered Kathy Wood's updates over the recent months this year. She believes Bitcoin could climb as high, I think, as 3.8 million by 2030. So she's gotten that much more bullish, which is a beautiful thing. We also have billionaire venture capitalist Shamath P, who is an early investor in Bitcoin, Tesla, and Facebook. He is bullish on Bitcoin, uh, believing Bitcoin can smash 500 thousand dollars per coin by October 2025, which is a half a million dollars per BTC. We also have the old man analyst, Peter Brandt. He says $200,000 by late 2025. Warren Buffett, who really cares what that guy thinks? He's the infamous one who shared, oh, Bitcoin is a uh, rat poison squared. And then lo and behold, uh, Charlie Munger, his homie, his partner in crime, uh, passed. Uh, he must have ate some of that rat poison. But nonetheless, Enemies of Bitcoin shall all perish. It's only a matter of time. Old money, move out the way and make way for the BTZ, for the Bitcoin way. It's the Bitcoin slang. It's the Bitcoin way. But anyways, fam, let me know if you agree, disagree with Max Kaiser's bullish prediction that Bitcoin will continue towards reaching a million dollars as fiat money is continued to be doomed. Do you believe Bitcoin will soar forever as it has no top, just as fiat has no bottom? What are your thoughts on Jack Dorsey and Kathy Wood's one million price prediction? Again, conservative because Kathy Wood recently upped those numbers as high as 3.8 million. 
Ryan in a bullish scenario. Let me know your thoughts. My personal perception is I believe the year preceding the following halving, the next halving scheduled to take place in 2028, I think sometime in 2029, we're likely to hit the seven-figure milestone. I feel it's destiny. We hit the six-figure milestone this cycle. Hopefully, it's this year. I'm betting on it for this year. However, if it's next year, it's all good. Bigger picture, we haven't hit the cycle peak yet. We're just getting started. Previous all-time high, previous cycle was 69,000. We tapped it November 10th of 2021. I personally feel we would have hit six figures. The previous cycle, purely retail driven, but we had scamsters and fraudsters and flim flam artists working with Gary Gensler, such as FTX's Bankman Freed, now serving 25 years in prison. However, now we're still more discounted than the previous all-time high back in 2021. Keep that in mind. Any price sub 70,000 is a buying opportunity. This is a discount. It's like going in a time machine, right? Because it's not going to be this price for long. Eventually, we'll be six figures. You may never see another $60,000, $70,000 Bitcoin price ever again. And then you're going to be praying, oh my God, please, Satoshi, drop the price back down so I can stack more sats. Please don't say it's too late. Please don't say it's too late. Buy. Seize the moment. These are opportunities buying opportunities, that is. 225,000 by the end of the year, says JC Ice. I love it. Multiple six figures. Let's make it happen. I like 500,000 in late 2025. Me too, Laser. Let's make it happen. 100,000 this year for sure. How much 2025 is the question? Amen. I see 100,000 beginning September. My personal prediction, I've been preaching virtually every day. Anywhere from 222,000 is the cycle low. Shout out to bring facts on that one. And as high as 750,000 for this cycle peak, I think this cycle peak will peak next year in 2025. But let me know your thoughts, fam. And welcome to the Q&A segment of the live show.